name is uh, Jérôme Tollet. I'm a distinguished engineer working for uh, Cisco System. And today, I'm excited to talk to you about Calico VPP, why we did it, and what is the value, what are the use cases we are enabling with these new renderer options for Calico. Many of you may not know what Calico VPP is, and uh, I would just would like to give you uh, a sense of what we're going to talk about. And then we're going to talk about uh, specific use case we wanted to address. And, and then we're going to have the opportunity to go in a little bit more technical details. Uh, Calico VPP is, um, is an integration of um, user space data plane for Calico. Uh, it's based on Fido VPP, and it actually complements what, you know, Calico, which already has uh, other data plane renderers, including uh, IP tables, including eBPF, and including uh, Windows data plane, right? So Fido VPP is really the first user space data plane coming with uh, Calico. It's entirely transparent for users and applications, but of course, it also offers specific optional optimized networking and HA features. And in terms of key features, and we're going to talk a bit uh, later, I will, I will be specific on wire speed encryption, which is actually very important, uh, high HA with maglev uh, service load balancing, and high performance networking options for network intensive apps. Other key features will arrive later, but these are the three ones we're going to talk uh, about today. Before going into too much details um, uh, on, uh, on Calico VPP, maybe a few words about VPP itself. So VPP is a fast, actually a super fast, open source user space networking data plane. It's uh, developed under the FIDO project, which is part of Linux Foundation. Uh, it's extremely rich in terms of features with uh, many layer 2, layer 3, layer 4 networking up, uh, features, including tunnelings like uh, VXLAN, IPsec, and so on, NAT, Takel, Crypto, TCP, TLS, Quick, um, and, and hundreds of other uh, features, right? So it's extremely rich. And this is really, uh, you can really see it as a, as a framework coming with, uh, with plugins, right? So it's easily extensible, and plugins are like nothing else than uh, .so files that are organized into a graph. So depending on your use case, you can enable plugins, disable plugins, and all that can be done at, uh, at runtime. It supports virtual as well as physical interfaces. So example of virtual interface will be AFXDP, will be uh, uh, VMXNet3 for VMware, and examples of uh, physical uh, interface will be, you know, uh, Intel or Mellanox interfaces. It's extremely, it comes with an extremely fast API with more than 200K updates per second, which is actually extremely important in the context of Kubernetes, which is a very dynamic environment where you constantly have to add and remove entries, routes, you know, backends, and so on and so forth, right? So this is actually a, a key differentiator of uh, VPP. And it's highly optimized for performance using uh, vectorizations and cache efficiency. Today, I won't go into this specific part of things, but there are plenty of other presentations available on the internet, and um, we can have longer discussions uh, about that if you want. It's multi-arch and supports x86 and ARM, C and ARM uh, CPUs. They are both actually uh, first-class citizens, and then other uh, other. Uh, uh, microarchitecture uh, are supported as well. The reason why we did Calico VPP is not just for technology. It's really to address some very specific use cases, right? And I'd like to highlight, you know, to start this presentation with three specific use cases and which are a bit difficult, not necessarily impossible, but a bit difficult to deploy with regular Kubernetes. The first one I would like to start with is internode encryption. We see a growing need, mainly for compliance reasons, to deploy internode encryption. And, and this compliance, uh, you know, uh, regulatory things, maybe SOC2, PCI, DSS, there are plenty of others. And basically, each time you cross a trust, uh, you know, boundary, you have to go for encryption. Right. And uh, of course, there are alternatives to, do, to that, right? You can use a uh, service mesh, you know, things like Istio, Envoy, things like that. But one of the problems is that uh, 
you do not always have a full warranty that everything going to be encrypted. That may depend on the, the way the application was written. So you do not have a, a full warranty of that. So for compliance reasons, it's actually easier to say, hey, everything that goes on the wire for node to node is going through IPsec using AES, GCM, 256, and DOT, right? Uh, this is something you know that you you can already do right with uh, with Linux data plane right, um, but Linux severely impacts the network performance. So in practice, yeah, you can do it, but at the cost of uh, of performance, right? Calico VPP data plane unlocks this problem by providing a wire, a line rate, and encryption options, including with WireGuard if you want compatibility with Linux Calico node. But it also provides a specific IPsec for my maximal CPU efficiency. Another use case is how to make highly available services, right? So deploying and exposing highly available services is actually complex with Kubernetes. Of course, you can start deploying things like MetalLB and deploying uh, uh, ingress controllers, but these things may become uh, but a, a single point of failure in themselves. And um, they, it's not always easy to deploy, right? One of the beauty of uh, Calico VPP, as opposed to other Calico renderers, is that it provides a maglev load balance, service load balancing. So it's easy to expose a service and uh, steer the traffic to all the nodes or some of the nodes in your cluster and then use maglev uh, you know for uh, load balancing which actually comes with a direct service return so that's another benefit of that and acmp is stateless which means that every time you add or remove uh, a node, all connections may be reshuffled, but it's not a problem because maglev comes with a consistent hashing for uh, service for for service load balancing, making sure that everything, if even if everything is reshuffled, then traffic will continue to be servicing with a, by the same port, right? So that's uh, that's another example of use case which is today difficult to do uh, with regular. Kubernetes with uh, with uh, regular uh, data planes, which is going to be easier to do with uh, VPP. Third use case is, uh, of course, network intensive applications, right? So regular Linux networking stack can be a bottleneck in 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 some in some in some uh, cases, right? For example, if you want to write a super high performance proxy, um, maybe TCP stack with TLS may not be that optimal. If you want to write a VPN concentrator with Kubernetes while going through the CNI, maybe TCP stack and uh, the way uh, you handle packets as opposed to stream in Linux is not ideal, right? Think of it also for content distribution, storage. So you have dozens of use cases like that where you may need uh, uh, high performance, right? So VPP offers a multitude of uh, alternatives for that with MemIF, which is now a standard supported with uh, other user space technology like DPDK or VPP, or there is libraries for that as well, to actually do packet processing as opposed to endpoint processing. Another example of VPP is it provides a host stack, which, is, which comes with the support of uh, TCP, UDP, TLS. Now we also have DTLS and Quick, and we expose that to the containers for shared memory, making applications running faster as long as you are ready to leverage this, uh, this uh, specific stack. So putting all that together, right, I'm not necessarily saying that there is a use case with where everything will be together, but I wanted to have one slide showing all these things, right? Actually, there may be use cases where everything is all together, but it's not mandatory. So here in this example, you can see that there is this uh, uh, purple line with a, with a lock showing that every node to node communication is actually encrypted, uh, but also you can have ECMP exposing uh, services going uh, to all the nodes, right, and, and doing a consistent hashing. And then if you want to do video streaming or high-performance uh, high uh, um, proxying with Nginx, 
maybe you can do it leveraging the uh, optimized uh, layer three uh, TCP or UDP stack coming with uh, VPP. So how does that work? VPP is deployed on all nodes as a daemon set. And Calico control plane is configured to drive VPP. VPP implements all CNI services, uh, including load balancing, policies, all that things, right, which are required. And of course, the configuration of VPP itself was highly optimized for container environment, which may be a bit different from regular network functions, which means that we have a very lightweight default configuration. By default, we are not using DPDK. By default, we are turning off uh, huge pages because they are not required and maybe um, uh, a bit difficult to deploy in containers. Pull mode is, uh, drivers are disabled by default. We turn off all the per plugins which are not required. On the flip side, we enabled things like GSO and GRO, which are extremely important in the context of, uh, of uh, containers, right? So this is really what it does. In terms of software architecture, VPP itself, right, it runs in a, in a container. So it's a user space application. So we did package it as a container itself. And this container is configured by the Calico VPP agent. All the, box, uh, the blue boxes on the left-hand side of this uh, slide uh, are completely unchanged. And all the boxes which are in, in, in white are the things that we did right for this uh, Calico VPP render. So that includes integration with uh, Go BGP, that includes VPP. And one of the benefits of that is you can, because VPP and Calico VPP agent runs in actually two different containers, you can stop one and, re and, and, re and restarting it without stopping the entire system, right? So you can literally update your data plane without stopping your containers, right? So this is the kind of things you can do. In terms of logical network topology, um, so on the left-hand side of this slide, you're going to see uh, the regular uh, way of deploying pods with Calico eBPF or Calico IP table. So in that case, as you can see, there are layer two Vs connecting uh, the pods, right? With these layer two Vs interfaces. It's a bit different with Calico VPP data plane because Calico VPP owns the uplink interface and gonna connect uh, the pods using um, layer three interface, making the uh, network model a pure layer three network model, which is actually much easier because you don't have to do R or MAC address or this kind of thing. You only have a layer three. So the overall network model is way, much more uh, aligned with the Kubernetes model, which is fundamentally a layer three model as opposed to a layer, uh, a layer two model. Right, and the host itself is connected with a tap interface connecting VPP with the. Let's have a look at the at the packet flow, right? So, as you can see, VPP, so the red the red box here, uh, owns the uplink interface, and uh, so which means that all the packets arriving to the node will arrive through this uplink interface and to VPP. VPP will do what it has to do in order to uh, to do what the CNI have to do, right? So, we, I mean, routing, NATing, load balancing, policies, crypto, if you have end-to-end -end crypto, and so on and so forth, right? But then uh, it's going to inject the packets, right, into uh, the regular kernel stack, right? And then the application sitting on in its own pod, the blue uh, box in this diagram, is completely unchanged. Actually, an application may, can cannot notice whether it's Linux or eBPF or VPP. There's no difference from an application point of view. And in order to do that in, a, in, a, in an optimal way, we use a super, super optimized uh, Virtaio uh, backend for the tune interface, right? With And we do packet coalescing with GSO and GRO interface. So if uh, your network driver supports LTO and LRO, then VPP won't do anything. It will result just uh, get the coalesced packets, which can, you know, uh, and, and, and ship them to uh, to the application. But if your uh, NIC card doesn't support that, then VPP itself has the ability to coalesce packets and inject that in the kernel for optimal network performance. And in terms of kernel isolation and pod isolation, there is zero change, right? That doesn't change anything. 
So what is the project status? So this is an open source project. It's all on GitHub. It's part of uh, the regular project Calico under the VPP uh, data plane uh, directory. Most of Calico features are currently supported. It was released as tech preview uh, maybe three weeks ago as part of Calico uh, 3.19. And uh, it supports all public and private cloud deployment, right? Including uh, Amazon. So uh, we support the ENA drivers. Actually, Amazon recently released a new version of uh, of their ENA driver supporting interp mode. All that is uh, is uh, we we leverage all these things. And if you want to engage with the developer community, of course, you can use uh, the Slack channel, uh, which is uh, where you have a link. So we have a roadmap and uh, many upcoming features. Um, just a quick highlight on that. So uh, short term, we're going to add very soon uh, MemIF interface to ship to deliver um, a packet interface in addition to regular Linux NetDev. Uh, we are working on some optimizations for some public cloud deployment. And there is operator-based deployment. Actually, this thing already exists, but was not upstreamed as part of uh, of, uh, of the tech preview 3.90. Midterm, we are working on adding the uh, VPP transport stack, including TCP, TLS, Quick, and DTLS. And longer term, we're going to integrate, actually, uh, Envoy with uh, this uh, TLS stack. Actually, this integration already exists. You, there is a recording if you want to see that. Uh, that was presented uh, during last EnvoyCon. Uh, but this is not properly integrated with, uh, with Calico. So we are working on it. And uh, we, are the, uh, we, are, we are also working on integrating that with Network Service Mesh. And in this slide, it's written as a longer term. But actually, earlier this week, we had uh, people from the open source community asking us uh, whether they could contribute and do that uh, uh, sooner than later. So maybe this last item may move from uh, longer term to actually short term, which is probably a good news. Let's do a bit of a deep dive on some of the differentiated features, right, that I was presenting as part of the use case uh, we really want to enable with this uh, Calico VPP data plane. So HA load balancing. So as you can see here, the, on the right side on, uh, on the right side of this slide, there is a router that does ECMP uh, load balancing. Right, uh, and as you know, ECMP is stateless. So let's assume you have a Kubernetes cluster with Calico VPP, and you want to expose services right outside of these clusters. Of course. So um, as usual, right, the router will do, uh, you know, will 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 steer the traffic to uh, to one of the uh, nodes. Here you have three nodes: node A, node B, node C. Right, and the, this node will do what it has to do for service load balancing. It will load balance and, and randomly choose, uh, you know, a, a pod, a servicing pod, and in that particular case, pod number four is chosen. Let's assume node number A for some reason fails. Right, in that case, ECMP because it's entirely stateless will reshuffle all connections. Right, this is the nature of ECMP. So uh, this blue uh, flow now goes to uh, node B instead of node A because node A, uh, uh, you know, failed. With regular Calico or regular, you know, things, um, the traffic will be is likely to be lost, right? But in the case of maglev load balancer, the beauty of maglev is that because it's a consistent hashing as opposed to round robin or other strategies. VPP uh, running on node B will take the same load balancing decision. So now node C, uh, the pod number four, will continue to see the same traffic. So there is a node failure, but there is no traffic interruption, right? By the way, another value benefit of uh, maglev is that there is DSR, so the traffic will directly return, right? So this is uh, this makes exposing services from clusters to the outside with a very simple setup and with optimal performance because you don't go through extra ops, right? By the way, this servicing no pod could be itself an ingress controller, but that is extremely valuable in terms of HA. 
The other feature I was talking about was a packet interface. So we introduced a few years ago this uh, standard named uh, MEMIF, right? Memory interface. Uh, to start with, it was primarily used by VPP, but it's now supported as a regular PMD for DPDK. And there are other applications leveraging this lead MEMIF standard, which are absolutely not related to VPP. Uh, in addition to the Tune to interface uh, or Linux NetDev, we're going to expose a MEMIF interface. So, with using a simple annotation, a pod will say, Hey, I'd like to have a MEMIF interface. So in your pod, now you're going to be able to have access to packets as opposed to stream, and everything will be user space end-to-end -end from the pod to uh, the physical NIC card, uh, providing optimal performance. This is extremely valuable for some use cases, uh, like, as I said before, VPN or other kind of uh, other kind of um, uh, packet processing applications. Other innovation is this uh, optimized VPP OSTAC, right? Um, so this is providing TCP, UDP, TLS, DTLS, and Quick. And in order to expose that, VPP expose the shared memory, you know, to your pod. So a pod can leverage a library named VCL. VPP communication library, which is also known as VPP host stack. And um, this is super, super high performance. So of course, it requires customization of your application or purpose built application. This is not regular POSIX, it's a POSIX-like APIs, but it's not POSIX APIs. So uh, it's really if you really want to have super high performance and do not leverage uh, kernel stack, in that case, you can do that. So it's going to be the case for people, again, doing streaming application or storage application for, or maybe high, you know, low latency application. This category of application may leverage that uh, and, uh, and benefit from this super fast VPP crypto uh, for TLS, for instance, right? Which, by the way, may be in software, but if your system comes with a quad card and so on, then, of course, we're going to leverage that as well, right? So that makes uh, using these optimizations much, much easier, right, for high demanding applications. Internode encryption, I talked a bit about it, but let's go in, into more details here. So Calico VPP provides multiple data plane encryption options. One is WireGuard, which is compatible with regular Calico IP table and eBPF. So you can have mixed hybrid uh, with hybrid cluster, some nodes being Calico VPP, some nodes being other uh, data plane renderer. Uh, so that, that's interesting for, from that standpoint. But if you are really looking at for super high performance, I guess you should go with IPsec. Uh, which is extremely performant, especially if you go with asynchronous crypto where you can support super fat flows. And as you can see here with some uh, tests we did, so if you go with regular Linux or regular, regular eBPF with WireGuard, you know, on our Skylake server, you're going to reach like uh, 2.6 gigabit per second, right, with uh, 1500 bytes packets. Doing the same with VPP, you will reach uh, 5 gigabit per second, and that's a bit old because we recently updated the WireGuard stack in VPP, and now that should be probably in the range of like 6, 7 gigabit per second. Uh, but then if you go with IPsec, you're going to be at like 9, you know, 10 gigabit per second. And if you go with Async and really want to have support fat flows, you're going to be able to go up to uh, 15 gigabit per second. That's on Skylake. Intel did a lot of uh, performance improvement with, Sky, uh, with uh, uh, upcoming Skylake, and they are kind of doubling the IPsec performance with Icelake, right? So uh, these are the kind of numbers that you can get this is really wire speed. This is really game changing if you have to deploy that at scale in large clusters. So let's let's summarize, right? So VPP is a new um, options for uh, user space data plane for Kali. Uh, it brings networking features which were previously only used by service providers and maybe cloud security and security providers 
to Kubernetes. It allows managing highly available uh, and high demanding applications, uh, networking applications in Kubernetes. Of course, contributions are more than welcome, and I'm happy to see some of them uh, starting to appear. And we are more than happy to answer to any questions and engage with you on Slack. And uh, thanks a lot for uh, the great engagement with the Calico community. This is really, really uh, good, uh, a great experience for us. Thanks a lot. I hope this was useful for you. I'm excited working on this new data plane option for Calico. As you've seen before, it's a starting point because we are right now in tech preview. We're going to be GA in the upcoming release, and there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of features coming up in the next uh, few months. Thank you. Thank you.